everyone, and welcome back to the Vox Out of Office streams. This week we are talking about the Mini Super Beetle, um, an amazing little guitar amp, um, if you can believe it. This little head here alone gets you the sound of a Vox amp, the classic top boost circuit with the new tube to give you this lightweight, small size, but a lot of portability and the sound of a tube amp, the responsiveness of a tube amp. So we thought, what better than doing uh, the Beatles with the Mini Super Beatles? So the biggest question that we get on Facebook here and Instagram and other social medias is how to dial in those Beatles tones, um, which is very understandable. The Beatles are probably the biggest artists who use Vox or used Vox in their day. Um, or, you know, maybe even the biggest rock band, um, depending on who you ask. So I thought we would dedicate a um, full stream as opposed to a quick section of another stream to talk about their tone, how they get some of those tones and, you know, the variation of that tone over the span of their career. Um, so what we are doing is running my built relevator um, th right into the mini super beetle you'll see here i have two pedals they are plugged into the path but they are not used yet we will get into those when we get to later beetles and a little bit of that fuzz or um, more broken up uh, guitar tone but first i wanted to start with just the clean early beetles that kind of classic box chime um, and so you are hearing the Mini Super Beetle the same way as the last few weeks through my Universal Audio Ox Box, um, taking the speaker output from the uh, Mini Super Beetle and going into there. Um, the Mini Super Beetle does have a headphone output, which I would use because it sounds really great. Um, if you want to hear what that sounds like, it's very similar to the audio in the um, Cambridge 50 video that we did a few weeks ago. Um, the reason I'm not using that is because it mutes the speaker and I need to hear myself and I'm kind of working on a um, limited gear setup here. So um, for that reason, you're going to hear it through the Universal Audio Ox set to a 112 Celestian type British speaker cabinet. Um, it's very true to what the Mini Super Beetle sounds like itself. So um, with all of that, um, let's get into some tones um, and feel free to drop any questions in the chat. I'm keeping an eye on that and we'll try to answer everything and cover as much as we can um, through this stream. So um, the real big thing about the early Beatles records is it is all about that Vox chime. And if I could show you the settings on how I played Blackbird for that intro um, or how I'll play a few of these other songs, it is the bass set fairly low at about nine o'clock and the treble set a little bit higher, about 11 or 12. Um, this gives you a lot of that mid range, but still a lot of the extra treble and that brightness. Um, if you watched our video last week, we talked about how this EQ works and how it's sort of shifting frequencies as opposed to just adding or cutting them. Um, and so that would be a nice reference to add on to this, but I'll explain everything again uh, as part of this. Um, another big thing, um, listening to their records and trying to recreate those tones. If I take my modern guitar with humbuckers that are wound at a more modern output, it sounds a little bit more um, powerful, um, which sounds like a good thing, but for getting those vintage tones, I don't like it as much. But a great thing to do is just knock the volume knob back a little bit to about nine or 10. And so if I play just a G chord, this is on 10 full volume for my guitar. Now, if I back that off just that tiny bit, you hear you get a little bit more of that mid range. The top end is a little bit smoother. That to me is like the biggest key of nailing these 60s tones. Just pull back the volume a little bit and compensate on your amps volume. Um, so we're going um, middle position. I have both the neck P90 and bridge humbucker on. Volume pulled back a little bit, tone all the way up. Uh, like I said, the bass on the Mini Super Beetle is set to about nine o'clock 
and the treble about 11 o'clock. And you can get those um, really classic um, tones from their first few albums, something like She Loves You. So that already is a great starting point. Um, I think if you wanted to nail these Beatles tones um, and you wanted to just take away one thing from the video, that would be it. Pull back your volume and set the bass to about 9 o'clock, the treble to about 11. But from there, there's a lot of experimentation that we can do and a lot of different settings that we can get. So if I pull back the gain just a little bit, now the gain or the channel volume is set to about 10 o'clock and I'm gonna turn the master volume up just a little bit to compensate for that. It's a lot more um, springy or, or um, uh, I wanna try not to default on saying chimey a lot, but that's, really the sound. Um, so this is, um, to me, this is a bit more of the, uh, I want to hold your hand. Um, so Jack Whitney just commented, you might be um, a second behind as I'm saying things. I'm not sure how long the delay is between me and the stream, but the volume and gain settings, the gain I just set to about 10 o'clock and the volume I have turned up a little bit just to get the volume right going into streaming. I have it about noon. Um, that really depends on the volume of uh, how loud you want to be while you're playing or recording or what you're doing. So this gives you sort of the, um, the I want to hold your hand kind of sound. Um, So that is a really nice place um, to start um, that will get you those vintage uh, 60s, early 60s, um, more bubblegum pop type sounds, less um, into the psychedelic later years of the Beatles. And those we will certainly get to. But I wanted to, uh, I do have a, a few settings I want to show you that are uh, around the same era, but there is... Um, one more thing I want to show before we get there, because I really wanted to divide the attention from clean and distorted Beatles settings. So this next one is um, just a couple years later, um, or maybe even um, only a year later, um, but it is a nice example of this clean tone, and it'll transition well into um, where we go from here. So this is... Um, if I fell, just these intro chords I really like for this setting. You know, when I was picking songs to play, I heard this and said I have to have to include this one because
So that's kind of a, a weird one in what it's doing with the chords, but the settings and the sound are very simple, um, which is why I really wanted to show that one. Uh, if you're just joining us, um, we are talking about the mini Super Beetle and using that to talk about Beatles settings and how you can get some of those classic tones from Beatles records. Um, we are hearing my built Relevator LS into the Mini Super Beetle. We have a few pedals here that it is running through, but they're not on yet. We will get to those um, once we get to the later, more experimental years. And you're hearing this through my Universal Audio Oxbox set to a very Vox Celestian speaker type sound. Um, so that setting, if I fell, is really, um, you know, if I play those same, even just those first two chords with my volume set all the way up, it has a little force behind it, which can be nice, but for this setting, it's a little bit more calm, a little bit more um, jazzy. Um, so if I pull back on that volume, we're now about eight or nine. So I have to turn up my volume to compensate for that a little bit, but it just brings out a lot of sweetness from chords like this, where you have maybe a seventh or a ninth. Um, you know, it brings out a little bit of that as opposed to being a little more forceful, a little bit more uh, punch behind it. So um, I'm going to repeat this a couple times because I know people pop in and out. But that to me is the key of these vintage settings. It's just pulling your volume back on your guitar a tiny bit to about eight or nine. And it really brings out the, um, the more full, rounded, um, vintage guitar tone. Because, of course, I'm not playing a vintage guitar. If you had a, um, you know early 60s um, guitar, you might get much closer to those sounds with the uh, volume turned up or if you have vintage wound pickups but if you just pick any guitar off the shelf at a, um, a guitar store and you're trying an amp this is sort of a nice way to get to that tone or if you're in a cover band that wants to cover a lot of territory um, this is a nice way to do it so um, from here from uh, these sort of cleaner tones I wanted to take a step into this in between, uh, the edge of breakup. Um, I'm sure you see a lot of people talk about that kind of sound online. I know I've mentioned it in the previous streams. It's sort of the, um, the big thing in tube amps and getting, uh, you know, that, that right special sound. And, um, I really wanted to use the mini super beetle to show these beetle settings because, if I go for um, early Beatles, but some of the little bit uh, uh, more involved um, aggressive songs like um, I Feel Fine. Um, I Feel Fine is a really great example of this edge of breakup thing, um, you know, very early in their career. So they're not getting into a lot of different recording techniques or fuzz pedals or anything like that. They just turned the amp up um, and you get this really nice sound. So we're going to recreate that using the Mini Super Beetle. I turned the gain up to about um, one or two o'clock. I have the treble set to about noon and the bass set to about nine. And I'm going to turn my uh, volume up gradually so we get a good level here. And so what this setting is doing is um, it's using the new tube in the Mini Super Beetle. That's in the preamp section. So you're actually getting um, accurate breakup from what you would get uh, in a all tube AC30, AC15. Um, you get that preamp breakup. And then in the output section, the power amp section, it doesn't have power tubes, which you get the, the real um, thick 
amp distortion is from the power amp tubes. Um, really turning your amp up. That's why a lot of people say, you know, you're not getting the full sound of an amp unless you crank it. Uh, if you want those distorted tones. Um, what's nice about using the mini super beetle is as I turn the gain up, it's emulating a little bit of that power amp breakup. So we get a nice um, setting where if I play clean, it's going to be a fairly clean-ish setting, but if I dig in, it'll get a little bit more aggressive. So that sounds like this. So you hear that difference when I hit a strong chord and a weak chord, I strum pretty softly, you get a little bit of that cleanup. So then, you know, training your, um, your picking hand to learn how to play with those dynamics, you could get a lot of this um, range from an amp set right on this edge of breakup, right at the in-between of clean and distorted. Uh, on the mini super beetle here, that's the gain set to about uh, one o'clock, and you could do something like this. So what I really like about that and um, why I wanted to use this uh, song and this setting as a transition between the sort of eras and sounds of the Beatles uh, between clean and distorted is one, that tone sits right in the middle and it's using just the amp itself. It's not using anything externally. And um, I am not a, an expert on what gear was used on recording what song so I'm not positive that that is the way the Beatles set this tone specifically but um, I'm fairly confident in it because this is um, a tone you're going to get from turning up an amp really loud live and the interesting thing about this transition from um, more clean to distorted tones in the Beatles history is uh, as they got bigger and bigger and their fans started coming out to concerts and they were screaming and the stadiums were packed. Uh, venues those days didn't have PA systems with mics for the amps. So they would have to turn their amps louder and louder. That's where the original AC50 and AC100 that the Mini Super Beetle is based on came from. And really, this is just the Beatles turning their amps up to be heard. But that gets you a little bit of that breakup. And, you know, I could guess that hearing that breakup and playing uh, dynamically while you're playing the song and, you know, getting into it um, with the audience could inspire then wanting to capture that sound when recording um, in the later years. So um, that's why I really wanted to show this in between. Um, now, if we go to um, another song... Um, we can kind of get the same sound one of two ways. Um, and we're going to gradually transition into what came next. So um, before we play that, let me just say, if you're um, just joining us now, we are talking all about the mini Super Beetle and getting Beatles tones with it, the perfect amp to do that. Um, I am playing my uh, built Relevator LS into the mini Super Beetle. We have two pedals here that aren't on yet. We're gonna to get to those in a second as we talk about these more distorted tones. Um, but for now, it's just clean amp and using the amp gain. Um, you're hearing this through my Universal Audio Ox box um, so that you can hear it with great quality. It's emulating um, a you know British Celestian type 112 cabinet. So very close to what you're gonna hear. Um, the Mini Super Beetle has a 110 inch speaker. So slightly different, but this is gonna give the best audio quality for the stream. Um, 
And right now we're talking about right on the edge of breakup tones. So um, I'm trying to cover a lot. If you have any questions or need me to expand on something, please leave a comment in the chat. But if not, I'll just keep running through. Um, so if we look at a song like Day Tripper, um, something that it's a little bit more... Uh, how I like to think of early versus later Beatles, or at least the songs I chose, is more chord progressions with a nice, you know, melody within them. Um, they, the Beatles, a big part of their sound is that melodic chord progression songwriting. Um, and then on to the later years, I hear more and more riffs and kind of working with um, the guitar more as um, a way to expand on their sound as opposed to just keep the rhythm and play these chords behind their songs. So that's why I like Day Tripper. It's a nice in-between for me. And I want to show getting the sound with both the amp um, set to this edge of breakup tone. And then we'll turn the amp gain down a little bit and use a pedal and show the difference between those two settings. So here's with the amp gain. Gain set to about one o'clock. Treble is set to about noon. And bass is set to about nine o'clock. <laughs> So that's a really nice um, edge of breakup sound like we've been talking about. Um, you get a lot of that um, extra bite to the guitar, a little bit of distortion, but it's not distorted in um, a more modern sense of the word. Now what I'm going to do is um, turn down the gain to about 11 o'clock and I'm going to turn up the volume a tiny bit just to compensate for that. So. Here we have a much cleaner tone, and I'm going to bring up one of these pedals. Um, so the disclaimer for these pedals, and I'll you know, remind as we continue to talk about these, these are not specific. Um, this is the sound of the Beatles. These are pedals I had at home that I could use to show you, um, one, how the Beatles might have gotten a tone similar to this and to how the super mini super beetle responds to pedals like this. So this is a pedal from um, big ear pedals called the loaf. I picked it because it's very similar to something like a fuzz face or tone bender, very classic vintage open sounding fuzz, which will be similar to what the Beatles used at certain points in their careers. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm not, saying, you know, this is the um, sound that they used on this recording. Um, that can be a little bit up in the air, and I'm um, not quite a Beatles historian in the way that some others are. So this is just to get an example, an, an open vintage fuzz. You could use a lot of things for this sound. Um, so we heard this song, this riff, using that edge of breakup amp gain. Now I'm going to turn on the fuzz itself. And we're gonna hear the difference between those two sounds. So here's with the fuzz. So the nice thing about that and um, something that I think is perfect for recreating these um, Beatles tones is having a dark fuzz sound. So I know you can't see the settings on this pedal and that's all right because this that's not exactly the uh, point of the video, but I have the tone knob set fairly low, which on this pedal brings out a darker tone. If I was playing just 
into the amp and did um, the same riff. There's a little bit of brightness there, which is nice for those vintage Beatles tones. But when I turn the pedal on, I want to smooth off some of that high end to get a little bit more of a um, rounded out, smooth, vintage sounding fuzz. So that is sort of the difference. If I change the settings on the amp real quick and go back to that edge of breakup sound, now you can compare the two. So that is, um, to me, sort of that in-between of um, edge of breakup to get more of those, um, you know, in-between period where maybe the Beatles are getting slightly more distorted sounds, but it's not quite at um, some of the more experimental psychedelic records of the later years. So from here... Um, we've sort of moved past the clean and we're into fully dirty. And again, this is a song and a riff. Uh, I couldn't do this um, stream without showing this one. It's a pretty um, important one. And it's another one that can do either, you know, one or the other setting, but using the other pedal that I have an example for. So first we're going to do, I'm turning the gain up a tiny bit more to about two o'clock and we're gonna do it with the amp gain. Um, this is Taxman. So that is, um, you know, really getting the amp to break up a little bit using all the built-in gain. So that's, once again, the gain set to about 2 o'clock, and then the volume turned up to compensate from there. Um, the uh, treble is set to about noon, and the bass is set to about 9 o'clock. We've kept that setting fairly consistent through here. Now you could, if you wanted to, roll off the treble a little bit to say um, 10 or 11 o'clock and play the same thing. Now if I put the treble back, it's a slight difference um, if you want that darker um, fuzz tone and if this is how you're just setting your amp to be broken up and you want it a little bit darker because your guitar is bringing out and that distortion is bringing out a little bit of the brightness that's something you can totally do um, but you know this is how I like to set it um, when recreating this but this song I think um, or at least this riff this guitar tone represents to me a big shift I don't know um, specifically if this is a song where this shift happened in the studio for them. But there is a period where the Beatles got a lot of their guitar tones by plugging directly into the recording console and turning that up to get this sort of unnatural gain that doesn't sound like a guitar amp. And um, back then that was, you know, super experimental. They were doing something and finding sounds that weren't really found before. Um, and this is a sound that I've gotten really into. Um, there are a lot of options out there in pedals and um, just standalone preamps if you wanted to do this recording direct in yourself, things like that to recreate this tone. Um, I wanna show you um, using this one, which is the um, Icarus Boost from Caroline Guitar Company, which I'm uh, having trouble getting to stand up. So there we go. 
Um, what I'm going to do is turn that gain back down to about um, 10 o'clock and turn the volume up a little bit. And so this pedal is an overdrive that just to me, it captures that sound of going into the preamp of the recording console. I don't know why there are certainly other options out there and this isn't um, obviously what the Beatles used. This pedal was released this year, not uh, 50 years ago. So um, if I turn on this pedal and turn up um, so that you can hear me, so that's a pretty good level. So when I play, you're going to hear a very different um, character to the distortion. You, it might have the same amount of distortion, but the shape of it, the way it responds is different. So that's really what you want to be looking for and listening for here. So that is what a um, more of a preamp style distortion pedal is going to do to the Vox amp set fairly clean. Um, it's a nice way to get those tones and um, something that I'm always searching after myself um, and, you know, have found it with a combo like this or running a similar pedal into maybe a um, custom series AC15, AC30, something like that. So if you're just joining us, um, we are talking Mini Super Beetle, how to get some Beetle settings from it, the perfect pairing of, uh, of idea and amp. So um, the Mini Super Beetle is perfect for this because of this new tube in the preamp section. It responds well to pedals, which we've used a bit, but it also responds well just to those dynamics as you play, uh, which we also showed a bit earlier in the stream. Um, I'm going to mention this again because I haven't in a bit in case you didn't hear me say this earlier. The big, big way I've gotten these tones using a more modern guitar like this built Relevator is pulling the volume back down to about eight or nine on my guitar. It really rounds out the sound. Um, I'll just show it one more time here. If I play a clean chord, that's at 10 on my guitar, and if I pull that back just a little bit to about nine or eight or nine, a much more um, flat, um, rounded at the top end, vintage style tone. So that, when I discovered that, um, really it's just changing the amount of volume going into the amp, but it makes way more of a difference than you might think. So um, from here, I wanted to show just a couple more of these distorted settings. And then um, I have a few more things that are non Beatles to show you to kind of wrap things up. So um, from Taxman, you get to um, some of the, you know, Taxman and Day Tripper. Those are sort of at that in between edge of breakup. You could do it with one or the other, the amp or a pedal. Um, from here on, these are going to be, you know, set the amp one way and hit it hard with a fuzz or with this preamp style pedal, which you could certainly emulate by plugging right into a recording console like the Beatles did themselves. So what I'm going to do with my amp settings is set the gain to about noon, treble to about noon, bass to about nine, um, and I have the volume set to about noon. <laughs> which I'm going to turn down a little bit just to, this is just to get volumes right in the stream. So that would be, you know, whatever setting works for how you're playing, practicing at home, recording, playing live, um, whatever it might be. Um, so from here we have some of these really um, thick sort of um, breaking up in the bass frequencies um, distortion settings. I like to use the preamp style um, overdriver distortion for that um, just because um, it gets that saturation in a way that the amp saturation doesn't respond so if I play something like get back
can really hear that um, saturation that the bass frequencies get. This is um, the sound of this to me. Another way you could do this is by turning up the bass control on your amp. Um, if you have just a boost or a regular overdrive style pedal, something along those lines. Um, the caveat for that, the slight disadvantage is the way um, the Vox EQ is set to be so flexible as you turn up that bass control, you're gonna lose a little bit of the low mid range, um, which can be great for dialing in a setting like this if you need to fit the mix right in a band. But um, I've found that the full saturation in that low end um, is really the low mid, so I like to keep the um, bass control set fairly low um, just to have a little bottom to it, but mostly that low mid range. If you want a little bit more info on how that tone control works and what I'm talking about here, our stream last week was fully on that, so that would be a nice place to check. Also, feel free to ask questions in the chat. I'm keeping an eye on those. Um, and if you do not have any questions, I'm gonna move on to um, something like um, same um, type of setting. I'm gonna turn it up the gain just a tiny bit on this pedal and show you um, come together. Um, similar type of setting, but you know, slight tweak to it. So there you go, that's a nice way to get that setting. Um, as you hear, because of that new tube in the preamp, not only is the Mini Super Beetle responding really well to this pedal before it, but it is also responding to the dynamics when I play that um, quieter harmony to the bass line, which obviously um, we're not hearing right now. Um, I play a little bit softer and it cleans up. And um, why I like using a um, preamp style pedal for something like this is because it gets some of those odd harmonics um, as those notes ring out under the uh, bass line, which is really neat. Um, we can also try using the, um, the vintage style fuzz that we had looked at earlier to play the same thing and you'll hear um, what the difference there is. So very similar tone um, using that vintage style fuzz, but as you could hear, um, hopefully that the stream audio is coming across clear enough um, that you can hear a little bit of that change in harmonics. Um, if not, if they sound very similar, they are similar and really you could do something like this with either, um, but you know, when we're talking about something like this, really 
getting into the nitty gritty of how to get settings from a classic band like the Beatles. Um, it's nice to get just a little nitpicky and say, you know, the way this responds and rings out, the way the harmonics react in the low frequencies work a little better with this type of pedal. Um, but, you know, both of these will get you there. Um, so that is all of the Beatles songs that I wanted to show you. Um, but I do have a few examples from here um, that I wanted to um, show that aren't from the Beatles, but show you what part of the Beatles sound is, I think. Um, and so obviously there's a big gap of some things I didn't cover, some sounds that the Beatles commonly used, like in um, Ticket to Ride or um, She Said she said, she said, um, there's that nice, um, flange tone or, um, 12 string guitar. A lot of those different ways of getting, um, a bigger guitar sound. The reason I didn't show those is because one, I don't have a 12 string guitar and two, I don't have a reel to reel tape player to show you how that flanging happened. They were, you know, literally recording takes slightly off time and how they're recording them to get a clash in frequencies. Um, there are flanger pedals out there or chorus pedals. Um, and even some that try to recreate that tape flanging, um, so those are totally ways to get those sounds. Um, and certainly there's, you know, the acoustic beetle sounds, um, and there's, you know, a lot of things beyond this, but we covered the Vox cleans and that chime of the early Beatles. And now on to, we just did a little bit of that distorted Beatles. So from here, I want to show you, um, three songs by artists that are clearly inspired heavily by the Beatles. And the reason I want to show you these is, um, for two reasons. The first being um, that clearly as these artists were inspired by the Beatles, they were inspired by their tones and they could bring that into a bit more of a modern setting, um, whether that modern setting was the 90s, 2000s or um, the last decade. Um, but also because um, the Beatles not only is their guitar sound, the guitars they used, the amps they used, it is um, how they recorded and how they wrote. So, you know, covering some of these preamp distortion type sounds, when the Beatles were in the studio, they are um, experimenting and trying different things. And that's a big part of their sound. Um, you know, of course, we covered a good chunk of what they did, but they have a little bit of... Um, uh, variability to those tones and you know there's a whole range here that can be sort of covered by just saying that's studio experimentation sometimes we can't recreate that sometimes we can use a pedal like a preamp pedal that now tries to recreate that because people are obsessed with finding those tones but those chord progressions like I talked about at the very beginning of the stream those really melodic chord progressions that is a huge part of the Beatles sound um, so you know, if we're just going straight into the mini Super Beetle, um, I'm going to turn the gain back up to about one and take the volume down a tiny, tiny bit. This is a song by um, Elliot Smith from the 90s. Um, I think this is a really big example of an artist hearing the Beatles and playing something that's clearly not the Beatles, but has the same sound, tone, and writing wise because of the way he wrote chord progressions and because he played at least for um, partly this era, he played a Epiphone Casino into an AC-30, you know, really getting that Beatles combination. Um, so here is this example. <laughs>
So as you can hear, um, melodically and the structure of that chord progression is very similar to something like, uh, even though it's a very different style of song, something like Blackbird. Um, the way those sound similar is because the Beatles use something called um, modal mixture or non-chord tones um, or chords out of the key. So uh, on Blackbird, you have G and then, you know, you work your way up. And as the song starts to walk down, it's E minor. And then they drop to D flat or D sharp major and then D major, E minor, C major, C minor. You know, it's walking a lot of places outside of the key. And that's a lot of what that Elliott Smith song does as well, um, which along with the way a Vox amp breaks up and the way we can set this amp, it really gives you um, that um, vintage Beatles type tone because you can do something like... Um, You know, that's moving all over the place, but you're hearing that Vox chime uh, as opposed to if I just were to play something like... Um you know, you could certainly get um, the tones close, but uh, in my opinion, that um, structuring of the chord progression makes a very big difference. Um, so from here, I wanted to show... Um, a more distorted example. Um, again, I'm gonna turn on this vintage style fuzz. I have the gain set to about noon on the amp. And if I play, uh, and I have my guitar volume still set to about eight or nine. If I play this uh, early Tame Impala song, you can hear a very similar structure in the fuzz tone. <laughs> So as you could hear, it has that sort of rounded off, smoothed uh, top end, that um, you know, somewhat tamed treble, um, but very um, low gain. It's distinctly a fuzz, but it's also uh, it has a lot of these harmonics that are coming from the amp. Um, part of that chime that the Vox gives when you put a smooth fuzz into it, it, it gets you this really interesting um, structure to how the amp is breaking up. Um, and I thought that song was, or at least that riff is a perfect example. Um, if you listen to the track, it's off, uh, Tame Impala's first album. I don't know what gear they're using, but to me, it sounds like probably a fuzz face into an AC 30 using, um, you know, either some vintage pickups or a vintage guitar. And that is like, you know, all the things in place to get all those keys set in a row to get that Beatles tone um, for those older broken up um, records. So, or those riffs on um, those records. So that's, um, you know, another example of how you can get that Beatles tone outside of um, actually playing like the Beatles. Um, and then one last example is a song from um, Dr. Dog. It's um, kind of this nice lo-fi um, uh, folk rock kind of thing, which in a way is really um, taking after the Beatles because they have these, you know, preamp type distorted tones using these simple um, uh, kind of bluesy guitar chord progressions um, in a really interesting way. And I heard this song and, you know, as I was kind of um, listening after I had, put together uh, this whole talk and I said, oh, wow, I have to show that because this is like the exact example of how to get this type of sound. Um, so this is a song um, from them. 
it's like this. Oh, gotta turn my volume up to about eight or nine. <laughs> So there you go. That's sort of a um, another example outside of um, using specifically a Beatles track to show that preamp style um, distortion. I guess really what I'm trying to show is that when you look at these Beatles techniques, uh, maybe you're in a Beatles cover band or you have one song in your cover band that you play from the Beatles. Um, there's a lot of that ca that can be transported to um, a lot of modern artists that are clearly taking um, inspiration from the Beatles and possibly even your own music. Um, so a lot of this, is, even if you're not playing vintage style music, can be really great um, for getting the sounds that you want. So um, I'm going to turn down the gain on this um, overdrive pedal just a tiny bit and play that again, just as another example. <laughs> Now, if we turn that um, that pedal off and turn the gain up on the Mini Super Beetle to about um, 3 o'clock, so most of the way up, and now I'm just going to play that opening chord so I can turn up and get a good volume. A tiny bit more. And I'm going to... Lower the tr I'm going to lower the treble as well, just a tiny bit. So now it was set to about noon, bass at 9 o'clock. Now the treble set to about 10.30 or 11. So there you go. That's a kind of a quick overview of all of these Beatles type settings using uh, the mini super beetle as well as a few pedals just to augment it. Um, hopefully this gives you an idea of what you could do with the gear that you own. If you have a mini super beetle, um, if you have, you know, an AC 4, 10, 15, 30, this translates really well to that. Even if you don't have um, one of those amps and you have something like the Cambridge 50, these um, settings would work really well. So that is sort of my quick overview of all of this. I hope you enjoyed the stream and I hope that you um, can take some of this knowledge and some of these examples and use that in your own music or your band however you play so um unless there are any questions i'm gonna wrap up the stream it doesn't seem to be um oh so the questions were rolling in and they weren't showing up on my screen now i see them so let me just uh answer some of these questions before we go um so um Matthew said, is that the Bluetooth version? And the answer to that is no. This is the standard Mini Super Beetle guitar amp. The new Mini Super Beetle audio, which is that Bluetooth version, is um, more focused on being a speaker, either for plugging in with an aux cable 
or listening over um, Bluetooth. However, it does have a guitar amp sound somewhat similar to what you'd get from an amp plug um, built into it, but not the same new tube amp sound from the regular Mini Super Beetle. Jack said we need to hear a little reverb, so I had the reverb turned off for those um, more distorted settings, but I'll turn on some reverb um, to play us out um, in a second. Um, Wayne said he bought a spare cabinet for his Mini Super Beetle, which is awesome. You can plug in two cabinets, um, which just looks very cool. It adds some volume um, because you have twice the speakers, um, and it's really just... Uh, a, a very nice thing to do. So um, unfortunately, those don't come separately, so you'd have to buy a second amp, but it is a cool thing to do. I'm glad that you did that, Wayne. Um, so Angelo says Vox or nothing, and that is a very nice uh, nice sentiment. Thank you for uh, chiming in, and thank you for loving Vox. Um, we certainly love uh, all of this feedback from... Um, fans um so um from okay so keith asks if i can turn the head around and um now that we are done playing i can but it is going to be a mess of cables so um there is a picture on our website that is going to be um, an easier way to see that um all i have set on the back is the eco mode off so that it didn't turn off while we were talking. I'm plugged right into the speaker output and that is it. Um, Keith said, built guitars made in Des Moines. Yes, absolutely. Um, I love this guitar and it's been working great for these um, out of office sessions. Um, this is the only guitar I have at home with me right now. So I'm glad it is versatile enough to handle, especially these vintage tones. And so that's it. So that's all the questions. I'm going to play out a little bit with reverb like um, was asked. And a tiny bit of tremolo because we also didn't look at that. And then um, just keep an eye out for future streams. Um, we should have another out of office stream coming soon. Um, we also have our artist mini session streams on our Instagram every Thursday. And um, yeah, thank you for watching.